If you didn't know, there is a paradigm shift happening right now in the world of textures and materials. What you used to do is you used to go to a website like Polyhaven and just scroll through their catalog of materials and you look for the material that's closest to what you want. However, most of the time you're not going to find the material you want and even if you do, you want variations on it and it doesn't exist. So. AI is kind of the new paradigm, because what you do is you type in, I want the zebra skin texture, it will generate it, it can make it seamless, and we can generate the normal roughness, ambient occlusion maps, etc. So why don't we start making materials with AI? And I will show you a website that does exactly that. Welcome to withpoly.com, what looks like a catalog of materials, but is actually much, much more. So let's say I wanted a zebra skin texture. We type in zebra, and you can see that it loads some materials that are already in the catalog, but it's not really a zebra material. You just say zebra and you hit generate and what it's going to do, you can see the progress bar over here, is it's gonna generate an AI texture with all the maps. So I'm gonna to skip to when it's generated. Okay, so here we have our zebra skin material. You can see it's actually a zebra skin, but more importantly, it's a seamless material with all the maps. So here you can see the color map, you can see the normal map, the roughness map or height map, ambient occlusion, and here's the roughness map. And you just click download and you can do this as a JPEG, or if you have the premium membership, uh, you do this as 32-bit EXRs. And you're not limited to 1K textures. You can literally download 2K, or again, if you have the premium, up to 4K or 8K. It's just going to upscale those textures. But we have a lot more control than just this. So let's say we're kind of still going with our zebra prompt. Uh, we can say, what kind of material is this? Is it a matte material? Is it shiny like a metal? Uh, fabric, dramatic, diverse, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go with organic because it's a very naturally occurring phenomenon. So I'm going to hit generate again and let's see what it gives us. Okay, so here's our organic zebra skin material. You can see it's pretty similar in this case, but uh, it's a seamless material. So uh, now let's try a couple more examples that are much rarer to find on a material website. So let's say we go for a brain and make it organic and let's see what that gives us. Okay, so I've generated my 4K map and this time it actually looks a lot more brain-like than kind of what I wanted in the first place, but here's how we get it in Blender. We can download either as a JPEG or as a 32-bit EXR. Uh, we are just gonna export this as a zip and then we are going to download this and put it inside Blender. Okay, so I'm just gonna save this onto the desktop and we're downloading our zip material. And meanwhile, let's open up Blender and kind of set this up for a material. So go to the shading workspace. Uh, you can have this be on any object. I'm just gonna have this be on a sphere and give this thing a material. And we're just gonna import in our maps right here manually. So now that my textures are downloaded, all we need to do is import them in. So I'm just gonna bring in an image texture node and just navigate to wherever you extracted this. So I have a folder somewhere here. It's called PolyBrain because it's a brain material and we are gonna bring in these maps individually. So first of all, we have a color map. This is just gonna give us the main color. Duplicate this, uh, unlink it and send this to a, let's do a roughness map, connect that in here. Next, and I'm assuming you've probably made materials before, but I just wanted to go over it. Uh, we're going to do a normal map. Make sure normal map is set to non-color and send this through a normal map node. <laughs> normal map. Connect that in here. Connect that in there. Now for the good stuff, we're going to do some displacement, some vector displacement. Uh, we are going to do a new image texture. And since we have a displacement map, we can uh, use that. So let's do it. Uh, we are going to add a displacement node as height, as displacement, and make sure to actually get a material displacement. You go to your settings and you're in cycles and you uh, change from bump only to displacement and bump. And that is way too much. So bring down the scale. And now you have a material that actually has some displacement going on. So there you go. That is how you import uh, materials with, with poly.